afternoon. I, I just wanted to visit and I thought, well, I would make some tea while I was doing it. So I might as well tell you what I'm going to make. Uh, I think it's going to be an evening tea because it, it's, and, and I'll tell you, I'm going to put one part of chamomile, one part of mint because I like it, and then a half a part of linden, and a fourth of a part of rose petals, and a fourth of a part of passion flower, which should all be quite relaxing except the mint, the mint is just put in there because it tastes good. But actually, what I really wanted to talk to you about is uh, some of the moves that we've made. And we I wouldn't say, well, yes, we have moved a lot, a lot more than a lot of people have. And uh, it's not something that, well, I'll tell you what, when, when my nest gets started to get torn up, I really have a hard time with it. And I can remember one move, I don't know what happened, but Tom and our older son, they got me sitting in a rocking chair. It was probably in a very bare room. And they said, you sit there until we need the rocking chair. <laughs> and I sort of set it out. But you know, when we ever got to where we were going, I just loved it, and it would only take me a few days to make it look like home. Well, this last time when we moved here, it was sort of a different move because we hadn't sold the place that we were at yet, and um, so we actually moved in before it was sold. But our move was also... Um, it was 13 hours away on the drive, and we had to come back and forth a few times. In fact, the first time was just to see what we bought. And we decided as long as we were going to go see, we would take some non-essential type stuff that we could store next door in our son's garage. And it wouldn't matter either way if it stayed or come, it went. And so we did that, and then we saw what we had to deal with, and the next trip then was to be a two-week stay. So uh, I brought stuff that, a bedroom, that we could sleep here, and also have, that we could sleep back where we were, so both places had a bedroom. And I bought, brought kitchen stuff but I had to make it so I could have a kitchen in both places. And anyway, it was I think during that time, that two weeks, we started putting in a garden also. But um, what I wanted to say, because our other place hadn't sold, I had to make it look still like home. And our real, a real estate man, he was really impressed because he knew what it looked like and he would come to show people it would always be different but it would always look good to show until of course the very end when we had to take everything out but uh, and the earlier moves especially if you have children they're sort of easier to get acquainted with where you're at and uh, so each of those moves until the last few moves, and, and actually this has been the only move that's been different. Um, when we moved, actually at 69, we bought 50 acres of bare land. And we put everything on it with help that was on that 50 acres. And we had our goats, we had our sheep, we had our chickens there, and that's what we left to come here. Well, when we came here, it was, oh, so different. We were 16 miles on gravel road where we were. It was 45 minutes to the first gas station and grocery store. Well, here it's down the block. But when we would drive, maybe we'd see, I don't know, the first 16 miles three vehicles was, 
might be all that we ever saw and sometimes none. Well, the next, when we got down to the paved, we might see a few more until we really got into the town, which wasn't that big either. So just the traffic here was quite an adjustment. But the thing about here, and I just think I have a great God because it just seemed like everything was planned just for us. Tom always wanted a fig tree. We have a fig tree. It wasn't very big that first year. It didn't have any figs on it, but now it does. And besides that, a bird has planted a fig tree in our front yard. And not always do uh, fig trees that are planted by birds turn out to be anything. But uh, it, it, the first year we were here, I think we saw it by the side of our porch. We transplanted it because we didn't want one there. And then, uh, let's see, year before last, it had a fig on it, which got knocked off, so we didn't know any, we weren't able to taste it. And then last year, it had two figs on it, and I could tell it's going to be a nice fig. I ate one of them. and. I don't know what happened to the, maybe I ate both of them, but anyway, it's a different, it's different than the one in our backyard. The one in our backyard is a domestic type fig, it's probably a mission, and the one in our front yard I think is a cross between maybe a white fig and a brown, I don't know what it is, because when the birds plant it, it doesn't have to be true to the parent tree because of grafts. And a lot of them are never edible. They're dry and pithy inside. And it, it takes, oh, um, four to six years actually for a fig to have figs. I know I was listening to someone talk about his figs having them the first day, I mean the first year after they planted them, but that was probably he was planting an older tree, not one from the seed. And so anyway, we're quite thrilled about that. But this place had an orange tree. We've got two lemon trees. We've got a lime tree. We've got two peach trees. We've got an apricot tree. We have three apple trees. Uh, we have an Asian pear. Um, what else? I don't know, but we have trees. And it's wonderful. And then there was never any garden planted. And I have a garden. We were able to have all that. And besides that, it's a southern exposure. And so the sun comes up on that side of my garden. And then it's sort of protected from the hot uh, west sun because of our orange tree. And it's just perfect. And, and the... Um, you want that, if you can have it, that southern exposure for a garden. But always sort of remember your neighbors, uh, let's see, the neighbor as I look across, she's on the north side of me, but her front yard, which is my north, is her south. So even if you don't have that perfect place, try to get your gardens as far away from a shady area like your house might make shade. We'll just put it further back. Even if you only have the north side, you can still grow a garden. Just get at work and get some, I think they would, six hours of sunshine a day. So anyway, I didn't mean to get sidetracked on that. What I really wanted to say was that we moved here, I was 74, and it's the first time that I don't have, um, all the other places, I had friends, I had family, I had friends that became family, and even though I love it here, I always miss that, that friendship. And you know what? <laughs> I don't want to get emotional. <laughs> I wish I didn't do that. 
anyway, um, I'm just thankful for my YouTube audience and for you that comment and talk to me because you have become my friends. And I just want to thank you. And, and remember when you subscribe, hit the bell and it will tell you <laughs> the crazy lady is here and I haven't made any tea, then uh, this is completely different. I've done my moving thing. Oh, and, and I do have, I mean, I've met my neighbors, but it's not the same. And next door is my son, and I see him every day. It's not that I don't see people, but uh, it, it just really isn't quite the same. Before, you know, there was always that traffic back and forth into my home, and there were times when we did things together, and so anyway, enough of that. But the other thing, I was watching um, a YouTube, I was watching Justin Rhodes, and he talked about the cardboard, and I got interrupted, so I didn't hear the end, I'll have to finish it later. But when we got here, we put, and we had to make those first beds out in the garden. I think the first two beds that I made, I put the cardboard down and we started from there. But the rest of them I didn't because by then I'd had a class and they talked about cardboard. And they said cardboard is just chemicals, just chemicals and why do we want to grow our vegetables in, in a bed that we've just put a bunch of chemicals and so we we don't even do that I think some of the beds we might have taken the sod off some of the beds we just ignored and just built up and put the new dirt and the new compost and the chicken stuff and we have wonderful soil and it doesn't never had the cardboard put down in it. So if you can figure out a different way to do it, think about there's uh, the glue, uh, all sorts of process chemicals that they use to make that into cardboard. And if you can avoid it, it would really be better not to do that. So that and I haven't done a thing on my tea, but I'm gonna let you go, and one of these days we'll just have tea together. So, surviving the 80s. <laughs>